All right. Welcome, everybody. We're very happy you could join us today. Hello, hello. We're going to wait just a minute before we get started. I'm going to try to grab that attendance link and toss that into chat. There's, let's see, there we go. Maybe if I can find chat, there we go. Now, now I'm set. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, send the attendance link out. Uh, if you could take just a moment to click that, we're not collecting any data other than just knowing if you're here. Um, we do also use that link to send out certificates, PD certificates after the workshop. So if you could go ahead and click that, I'll be able to send you a certificate afterwards. So it's great to see all of you today. And I think we're going to go ahead and get started. I'll keep letting people in as we go. Um, but I want to give Sean as much time as possible. So welcome, everybody. My name is Lori, and I'm a PD specialist here at Code HS. Um, we also have Leah in the background. She is the director of PD here at Code HS. And you are not here to hear either of us. You are here for Sean Razor. And he's got some amazing uh, wisdom to share about deep dive into student learning with Code HS. So he's been a Code HS teacher, well, he's been a Code HS teacher for a long time and now Code HS teacher trainer. So we are really excited to have him here. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to Sean. Well, um, thank you, Lori, uh, for the nice introduction. And, and thank you all for, for taking time out of your day to join us. I know it's, uh, it's you know, it's been busy for all of us and it's, uh, it's a crazy year, so I know it's, um, you know, thank you for taking time out of your um, afternoons or, or evenings, depending on where you're at. Um, just a little about myself. So, Lori said, I've, I've been using Code HS for, for quite a while. I think it's, I think I'm in my fifth year uh, using it. I've been teaching computer science for about eight years right now, and uh, I just, I love the platform. So, um, you know, I like, I love doing these, these, um, these workshops, and just working with Code HS to, to share my experience with other teachers. So, uh, you know, as the, as the title talks about, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of look a little uh, in a little deeper with, um, with the actually student, student learning aspect of using Code HS, um, trying to figure out how we can get more information about uh, what the students are learning and what they're doing as they, as they work through all of the exercises and units and, try to see how we can get some, some more information from just um, seeing what they're doing with Code HS. Um, first of all, just a little background um, and just um, some things for you to do as we go through this workshop. Um, let me start going through the slides. So if you, if you haven't um, signed up for a teacher account, um, it is helpful because you can actually go through some of the things that I'm going through. So there's a quick link right here um, on Code HS. And you can see the link right here. You can click on that and sign up. It's really easy to get a, a free account. Um, if you already have one, that's totally fine. Um, we're gonna give you a link to actually join our demo section so you can do some of the things that we're doing. Uh, so here's the, the workshop section. And just so you know, the, um, having your students sign up for your section, it's just as easy as this. You create a section and you have a unique section code. And all your, all your students do is click on that, fill out a couple um, pieces of information, and then they're in there, um, they're in your section. I'll, I'll leave that up. Are you guys, let's see, is, is it showing up in the chat? Perfect. Um, we'll get that, that link for you in the chat. So before, before we start looking in depth um, with, with the, the deep dive into Code HS, just a little bit of background about what Code HS is and how it was started. Um, I'm going to kind of go through this uh, quickly just so we can get into kind of the meat of the workshop, but I think it's really important to, to have an understanding of um, where this company came from and, and what was the kind of the, the founding principles of Code HS. So Code HS, it's a comprehensive platform for teaching computer science in, in both middle and high schools. Uh, there are, there's a a wealth of information and curriculums for um, curriculum and different classes for six through 12 um, learning. Um, in addition to that, there are um, both online and offline professional development. 
de development, just like what we're doing right now. Um, they've also, um, I know it's, it's a little different right now with in-person workshops, but in the past they've had um, in-person uh, events such as CarolCon and um, other uh, learning opportunities. I've been to a couple of those and they're really awesome. Um, I've learned a lot from meeting um, the founders and other employees from CodeHS and, um, you know, going through workshops where you're actually hearing from the engineers and um, the um, account managers and um, other employees to, to really get to know them. Um, they've got a full software platform with tools and resources. Um, you, as a teacher, you basically have everything you need to, to teach computer science. There's lesson plans, there's um, solutions, there's grading tools. Um, it's really a, a full platform that even if you don't have any experience with computer science, you can use this platform and jump right in and, and really have everything you need to teach a full year of computer science. So CodeHS was actually founded and created by two students that met in their freshman year at Stanford, um, Jeremy and Zach. Um, so here's a picture of, of them right here. And uh, they were computer science students. And what they, what they wanted to do was um, give other students the opportunity to learn computer science um, in high school and middle school. They, they kind of thought back to, to what it was like when they went to school and they, they thought about the resources that weren't being taught. And they wanted to make a platform that would give students that opportunity that they wish they had. Um, they started CodeHS in their senior year at Stanford, which was 2012. And it's basically been growing and evolving ever since then. Um, you can see here this, um, this car, this pink car that they, they, uh, they, they got. I don't know if you know, they rented it or owned it, but they, they got this paint job and, and really started advertising CodeHS. And they did a, a cross-country trip where they visited hundreds of classrooms all around the, the U. They did two separate road trips. And basically they wanted to promote CodeHS and just make teachers aware of free platform that was out there to start getting computer science taught in schools all around the country. Um, ever since 2012, CodeHS has, has been a free platform for teachers to use. Uh, they've been adding, every year they add more, um, more topics, more courses to, to not just teach computer science, but to grow and have, it integrates with different subjects such as math or music or um, cybersecurity and really almost any topic you can think of, there's a CodeHS course for that. So I love this, this is their mission statement. Um, their mission is to empower all students to meaningfully impact the future. And you know, we, we live in a digital world where um, almost everything we do is tied into to computer science, you know, the, the computers or the phones or um, tablets, really anything that we use uh, is run by a computer or, or a program. And it's really important that our youth, our students uh, understand how, how computer science ties into our world. And if, if you're not um, learning about programming and computer science, you're, you're not preparing yourself to be successful uh, in the future. And I love this um, kind of this slogan that they have at the bottom, um, read, write code. Um, I, I learned about that uh, a few years ago and, and really they, they believe that coding is one of the essential skills, just like reading and writing are. You know, when you think back um, years ago, the, the key skills that you had to have were reading and writing. Um, in order to just be successful in life, you had to know how to do both of those. And, and they believe, which I strongly agree with, that we're at the point where coding is one of those essential skills. And so you'll see this, you know, if you see any um, stickers or branding or uh, sweatshirts or anywhere on their website, they, they really emphasize this um, slogan, which is, I think, just a great philosophy. And I think more educators and teachers need to be um, talking about this, this strategy and this, um, this belief. So let me. Hold on, my cursor wasn't working. So one of the problems that, that CodeHS wants to solve is that most schools don't teach computer science. You know, I think, I think that it's, it, it's a problem that 
we're making some progress on. But, you know, one of, one of the challenges is that schools want to teach it, but they don't have the tools or they don't have, they don't know how to solve this, or they don't have the teachers that they need. You, when you think about um, engineers or um, people that have, have graduated as a CS major or engineer, a lot of times they, they go out into the tech field and it's hard to attract those people into a, a teaching job. Um, there's, there's salary differences, there's um, just having a credential, and it really is a challenge to try to get people that, that have those, um, you know, that, that um, understanding of computer science. And where CodeHS comes in is you don't need to have that background. Um, their comprehensive plan really allows for any, anyone. Um, you don't even have to be math or science. You know, we've, at my school, we've had English teachers that have come in and helped starting to teach CS. And a platform like CodeHS is perfect because it, it really gives them all those tools. Um, you know, a, a lot of schools want to get computer science and it's, it's kind of a challenge. You know, teachers don't think that they have the skills or abilities to teach it. And so um, we really need to promote the fact that there's platforms like this that exist where teachers can come right in and use these tools to, to start teaching computer science. So I, I kind of already started talking about it, but that's, that's really the solution is, um, you know, getting CodeHS out there and, and making teachers and schools and districts aware that there's these tools out there that can solve this problem. Um, this is just a list of, this isn't all of them, but this is just a list of some of the curriculum that's out there. Um, for middle school classes. You can see that there's AP courses, which at, at a lot of high schools or um, high schools, uh, that's important to them to have the AP class. I say these are, these are two of the more common um, classes. I know at my school and in my district, they, they, all of them teach this AP class, but there's also um, intro classes. Um, a lot of middle schools want to have an intro class where um, students don't have to have any coding background to, um, to take their class. And so you've got intro CS and Java and Python. Um, you've got web design, virtual reality. Here you've got coding and music, art and sports. So you can start integrating this with um, other departments that uh, maybe they're not aware that you can tie computer science in with their curriculum. Um, there's a, on, on their website, they have a full list of all their curriculum. So um, it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, just a little, um, a little uh, history on, on how CodeHS has benefited me. Um, like I said, I've, I've been using CodeHS for, for the last five years and I teach AP computer science principles. So at the end of the year, um, most of my students take the AP and you know, preparing them for the AP exam is, is a really a, a huge goal of, of what I'm supposed to be doing and what I'm trying to do with my course. And actually, this, this is just a, a quote from one year, but actually it's true for every year since I've been using CodeHS. Um, my students have had a 94% or higher success rate on the AP exam. Um, if you're not aware of that, scoring a three or higher is passing the AP exam. And so, you know, it's really, it, that's one of the things I look for when I'm, I'm trying to decide what curriculum I'm going to use, find a curriculum that's going to allow my students to be successful. And, and you know, it's, it's very obvious that they provide the tools and resources for my students to be successful. So, you know, we're here today to, to talk about how we can, how, how as educators, and Kind of dive deeper into the mindset of our students. Um, you know, it, it's great to to get uh, you know to provide exercises and lessons to the students and just see if they did it or not. But it's also too important to understand what our students are thinking, what challenges they're having. Um, you know, if they're where they're getting stuck as they go through the lessons and the exercises. And so there's a lot of resources within CodeHS that allow us to, to get this type of feedback. And that, you know, one challenge I've seen 
you know, CodeHS is such a comprehensive platform that you're not going to learn everything the first time you start using it. And so I, I think it's important to understand what tools are there and to start focusing on, on what things you feel are important and learn how to use those. And then each year start focusing on a little bit more. And, you know, eventually you will um, become an expert with all the different resources. So some of the things that um, are, I think are really helpful, um, you can get, you can provide instant feedback to your students. Um, they've, they've, got, um, they've got a conversation tool that allows you to write comments or to receive comments from students as they're working through the exercise. Um, they've got a submission system where you can view their code right away and provide feedback on, on what they've done so that they're uh, right after they write it, they can see, um, they can get feedback on maybe what they've done wrong or suggestions on how to change things. They've got um, tons of different um, grading. They've got a fast grade system where you can quickly go through things and provide feedback. There's tracking tools. You can see how long um, students have spent on, on exercises. Um, you can see how many uh, points they got right on the quiz. You can see what, um, what the most commonly missed questions were so that you know what to focus on for the next class. Um, this, you know, this isn't a platform where you have to download anything and install it on your computers. I know sometimes that's a challenge with IT is trying to, to get these things approved, and that's not always easy. So CodeHS is all web-based. So as long as you have a web browser or an internet connection, you're able to use this. Oh, hold on. Sorry, I keep getting knocked off of the slide, so my arrows aren't working. So uh, when it comes to the tools and resources that you have as a teacher, um, I've mentioned some of these already, but you've got, there's lesson plans that are provided for every single exercise or every single lesson that, that are in the course that you're teaching. Um, there's an automatic grade book. You know, as, as teachers, um, you know, everyone knows that we don't have all the time that we need to, to grade and to, um, to really go through every single exercise. I know, you know, I have uh, five sections of computer science with 34 um, students. That's 170 students that I have. And every lesson, they probably have six or seven exercises that you're doing. So when you're multiplying 170 times six or seven, uh, I, just, I don't have time to go through every single exercise and, and go one by one and grade all of those. So the fact that they have automatic grading and code checkers where they can, when they submit something, they get instant feedback to tell them if they got it right or wrong. There's test cases that um, their code run with, with different arguments, different input. So they get that feedback and they're able to, um, to modify it on the spot and, and change their code to try to get it right. Um, I can, I can look at my section and I can, at any point, I can pull up my class and see every student. I can see how far they've gone in the lessons. I can, I can check their progress. Um, you know, you can see some of the other things. Uh, we've got block coding when you're starting uh, the course in the beginning. Sometimes block coding helps out um, with some students if they're not familiar with programming. Um, we can, you can set your due dates. So sometimes students can't work ahead. Uh, they know when things are due. Access controls can lock some sections so the students aren't able to work ahead. Um, you can see this is just a sample of some of the, the resources that are available. So one thing that I wanna look at and um, kind of go into some more detail is the, the CodeHS code editor. So this, this is um, something that's standard um, on all of the different curriculums. Uh, there, I would say there's some of them that are a little different, like the, you know, the virtual reality and, and some of them are, are a little different, but for the most part, the CodeHS editor is set up in this uh, format with the lessons and assignments. So when, when the students are on 
their their course uh, when when they're uh, when they log in and they're on your course, this is what everything looks like. Um, you've got it, the the course is broken down into modules, and here if you're looking at this, that's everything that's inside of this blue square. You can see that uh, the module here is programming with Carol, and these this, these green icons are all of the different lessons that are contained in it. You can see right here that this contains, um, I believe, 15 lessons. I, my eyesight's going a little poorly to see this. Um, it's, there's 15 lessons. And you can see each lesson is broken down into activities. So these, these icons here, these, these little circles, are the activities. And each activity, uh, e each lesson follows kind of the same standard. There's, there's always a video that uh, the students watch when they start the lesson. And most of the videos are anywhere from, from two or three minutes to maybe five or six minutes. Um, you, you know, there's studies that have been shown that if you give really long videos, like 10 or 15 minutes, the students just check out. They, they're not able to watch that and pay attention. So I like that CodeHS has, has really focused on shortening these videos. So the students watch it, they get their content, and then they can start applying it right away. Um, you've got a, a short quiz, uh, a check for understanding after they, they go through the video. And it's, it's really uh, their opportunity to um, answer a few questions, normally one or two, maybe three questions. Uh, and the way, the way that I, I go through that with my students is um, I, don't, I don't grade them on the quiz. I don't give them points either. I, I don't take points away if they miss questions. Um, but I tell them that if you're missing questions, it means that you haven't re retained the content from the video. So that's an indicator that you need to go back and rewatch that and try to find where that um, disparity is, where you're not um, understanding that content. Or I talk about them, we we'll talk about that with them. There's always um, a few examples, one or two examples, so that the students can see that concept in action. Um, you know, this is this is called More Basic Carol. Uh, this is an intro um, course where they're just getting some basic um, commands, learning how to move Carol around. So these examples would be just Carol moving around her world um, and, and learning how to, to use some of the basic commands. And then they've got, they always end with some exercises where the students have to apply the content that they just learned. And so again, every, every lesson is set up this way. There's always, you know, there's, there's some discrepancy. Sometimes there's a uh, debugging activity or a reflection where they have to um, respond to some questions but it, it's always very similar. And I like that, they get used to it. Um, they're, they're comfortable going through it. Um, they know to look at the examples and not just skip through it. So it's, I think having that consistency is really helpful. Um, here you can see, this, this shows you the module in, in a little greater detail. Um, you can see, you know, almost every lesson is set up the same way. Some of them, have, have some more exercises than others. Um, you can see some of them, um, some of them have like a badge at the end um, or um, a, a, a response that they have to do. But again, same format for all of them. Now, the, the code editor. So the code editor is always set up the same way. You've got, you've got three main sections in your code editor. Uh, on the left, this is the, the cheat sheet. This is where um, they see the, the resulting world, or if you're not doing the Carol exercises, it'll show you what, what the output or the result of, of your program should be. But you also have the documentation or um, the code that they should be using in the program. So it's, it's basically like, if, if they're using the documentation, it's the section they should be looking at. Um, this is really helpful. It, it shows them how the documents are, are valuable and it, it, it focuses on, they don't have to memorize everything. They really have to just learn how to use the different commands. 
which I, I think that we live in a world where that's realistic. You know, um, we, we've got things like Google and other tools that, that programmers have. So they don't have to memorize everything there. If, if there's something they don't remember, they can just do a web search and look it up. So, you know, having the documentation, I think, is a, is a realistic way for, for them to learn programming. Um, you can see here, uh, you know, I just kind of went through this useful commands shows the end result here. The, the middle part of the code editor is where they actually do their programming. Um, this, is, this is where they write their program, they write all of the commands, and you know, it's kind of like their canvas. Um, they get to fill in um, their, their program here. Um, you can see that the code editor um, has a couple different tools that are here. Um, you can change the editor settings. You know, some I noticed some of my students like changing the settings to the dark background and, and having the text um, the show up light. Um, you know, I, I think some some programmers like setting it that way. So uh, they they get to have that experience having their code editor customized to how they they want to see it. Um, on the exercises which have the option for them to code in block view, uh, they can actually um, convert between text and block um, uh, block based coding. Again, uh, I, you know, I when I when I was first getting into um, teaching computer science, I was a little hesitant for them to block view, but I've come to learn that it's it's really valuable to give some student to give students that experience. I think some students just learn better. Um, having things it, where it's visual and they can see what they're doing and they don't have to, they don't have to worry about some syntax errors where they're missing a semicolon or, or, or a parentheses and they're getting stuck up on their, their program on the, the debugging. So I, I let them choose what they want to go through as we're learning those first few units. Once we get past the first couple of modules, they all have to write their code. But again, I, I think it's a really valuable tool. Uh, and again, in this middle area, this is where they, they write their actual program. Um, these, these are the units where block coding is available for. Um, it's only the, if, you're, if you've got a curriculum that has Carol, it's just the Carol exercises, web design, which is one of the first units, and Tracy exercises using Python. Um, Tracy the turtle is, is one of the intro units. Um, hold on, I'm off this again. Now, the, the third side to your coding area, this is um, the editor tabs. So this is, th this first is where um, they run their code or they can click um, code check. That's where the auto grading is. Um, on some of the visual um, programs like Carol or Tracy, this is where they can control the speed. This is a great tool because it actually, it, it highlights every line of code that is running. So again, your stu students have that visual, um, that, that, that visual part where they can look and see what each line is doing. There's, there's some other tabs here, which are really important. I think the next slide has these. Yeah, so run code, grading. So this is where they can actually um, see their program versus the solution. Um, the exercise, uh, this gives them another area. If they forget what, what they're being asked to do, they can look here and it, it gives them the description. The docs, my students love this section. This is, again, the documentation for all of the, the code HS um, commands that are, that are relevant for your curriculum. You know, when you're, when you're doing Python, it just shows the, the Python documents and not JavaScript. Um, I, I let them use this on every single program. You know, when, when they're doing an assessment, they still get to use the documentation because again, I, I don't focus on them memorizing everything. It's, it's applying it. Um, this is the help section. This is where they can ask questions. This is where the conversation um, happens between myself and the students. They can ask questions and I can respond to them right away and we can have a dialogue in this tab. Um, the more, more section, we're gonna talk about that in just a little bit. This is where you can see the code history. And um, I think that's a really valuable tool when you're trying to understand 
um, the mindset of the students as they're actually coding their program. Um, I, I know, I just wanna stop, it's, it's about, uh, it's four o'clock, we've been going through this for about half an hour. Um, I, I don't like just talking and, and just getting a bunch of questions at the end. Um, I, I just wanna see, does anybody have any questions that have come up so far? And you know, any, any of the con uh, content that we've gone through, are there any questions? You know, because we are a smaller group, I think it would probably be okay if you unmuted as well. Would that be all right, Sean? Totally fine. Yes, oh, okay. absolutely. Sean, we did have one question just um, regarding a little bit about free and pro. And I just mentioned that, um, you know, we can talk about that as we go through the workshop. So, um, and I'll try to keep up with you and toss those messages into chat as well about which tools might be free or which ones might be pro. But if you have anything you want to chime in on that with, that'd be great. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, so far, um, let me just look back. I, I believe so far, every, I mean, everything we've talked about is free. Um, there are, when we look at the, the grading, um, there are some things that, that are free and there's some things that are pro. And, and we do, I do mention that as we go through this. Um, but so far, all the documentation, um, that being able to look at the history, the, um, the lesson plans, uh, the solutions. If I go back to this slide, um, almost uh, uh, most of this stuff is free. There's, again, some of the stuff like um, the uh, fast code, um, a couple other tools um, are part of the pro. Um, you know, one, one thing that I'll say, um, you know, I've, I've used both. Um, I have had, um, a few, I've had a few years where I had pro access and I've, I've also more recently, um, once, once my school has, you know, as all of our schools had been, been dealing with COVID, um, they've, they haven't been as, as flexible with, with purchasing and money. Um, so I've been using the free section for the last two years. I, there are some of the tools I miss. If, if I had the choice uh, and I had uh, money, um, I would definitely go for the pro version, um, but there's, you, you can definitely get by on the free section. All, everything that I need is there to get by. So um, again- um, if I can just add one quick note to that. Yeah. Um, I was a free teacher the entire time I used CodeHS in the classroom from 2014 yeah. to 2019. And you can absolutely grade. You can handle everything on free. Would I have loved to have had some pro tools? You bet. <laughs> but yeah. you could absolutely do it on free. So. Yeah. I, you know, again, I, I've used both and I, I totally agree, but um, not having the, the pro, I haven't even considered looking at other platforms because I, I just love this. I, I love all the content that's here and, you know, wouldn't switch it just because I don't have pro. Um, are there any other questions? Hi, Sean. My name is Maribel from Puerto Rico. Yeah. Um, the lessons can be hidden so the students don't see um, them while they are working on the previous lessons? Yeah, um, you mean like like the lessons, like move, like uh, lessons up in front, like stuff that we haven't done yet? Yeah. Yes, that, that is possible to do. Um, I, believe, uh, I believe that might be a pro tool. Um, is that right, Lori? Yes, so access yeah. controls um, are a pro tool. I will say there are a few, um, maybe some things you can do to get to work with that, but yeah, the actual access controls are a pro tool. So, yeah, I mean, so to be honest, when, when I was using pro, I, I did use the, the access tools. I, I blocked cause I, I, I didn't want students just going ahead, but I, I thought that was great that they wanted to go ahead. So what I've, what I've done this year is uh, you know, my, my students, I think everywhere, they're so, they're so obsessed with points, right? They're so obsessed with their grades. And I, I've just told them, I say, you know, it's, it's so important to stay on track and, and just not 
go ahead and, and then you're out of line with all of our, our content that if, if you keep, if you go ahead, I'm just going to knock points off. And, and instead I show them other things they can do them. Other things like, uh, you know, other, other there's practice problems. There's, there's other sites. Uh, Code HS has practice problems that they can do. Um, and just other things like there's, there's free sites out there that have challenge problems. And so they get by with that and it still allows them to work on programming while not going ahead in our curriculum, which, you know, which throws things off. So I think that's a great question because that, that does come up. Um, so I'll, here, I'll go ahead to some of the, the other teacher tools that we have. So, um, if you're, so if you, if you joined our, um, our section, then, uh, you can look at, so in, in this section, uh, this is a pro section. So you do have access, you have the ability to look at, um, some of the tools that are in there. Um, Sean, can I interrupt for one more second? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you have not enrolled in Sean's, uh, section, um, I can certainly drop that link back into chat, but if you have, I did create this demo section for you. So you'd be able to see something similar to what you're seeing on Sean's screen. And that is a section where you can actually try out the pro tools. So if you haven't had a chance to enroll yet in uh, Sean's section, go ahead and do that. Drop me a note if you need help with that. And I'm happy to make you a demo section too. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a great way to see some of the different features. Again, I'm gonna go through them. Um, but you can actually um, see some of the things we're going through. So this is, you know, we, I've talked about the conversations um, a little bit. Um, if, you're, if you're in uh, an exercise, this is under uh, the more tab. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just switch a tab real quick um, to just show you where this is. Um, I have this is just an exercise uh, in a demo section that we were looking at. And if you go, again, it's, it's under the more tab and you can see these are, these are other tools that are available. And if you click on conversation, um, what you can do is you can just type your message right here and you can send the message and your teacher or, or student who, are, you know, if the students are sending it or if you're sending it to the students, you start this back and forth dialogue. And this is, again, this is a great way to understand the problems that the students are having. Um, you know, if they're getting stuck on something, they can immediately um, uh, send you a message and it helps you get an idea of what things they're, they're having a challenge with. If, you know, if you're working on a, a problem that works with functions or parameters with functions and you start, you start getting a, a large number of, of, uh, of messages that are all relating to the same topics, well, that, that gives me an idea that next class, I need to go back and uh, reteach that part because there may be five or six students that are send me, sending me that message, but I, I know that there's a lot of other students that just didn't do that. They're that maybe the, the quieter students that are not reaching out. So, you know, that's, that's one thing I use to, to just gauge, uh, get like a temperature check of the, of the students. Um, so this is, this is another way um, when you're looking at uh, your kind of your roster. So, if we look in here, let me just, I'm gonna see if, if anyone joined. This is, so this is our, uh, this, this is what you see when you look at your class roster and what you can actually do. Let me just move my tab. Um, you can see right here, this, this um, uh, kind of like the dialogue or the, the text bubble, um, you're able to see right when you look at the class, you can see um, who sent you a message. And you can click on that and respond right away. So this is something I do uh, quite often. I, you know, again, I've got 34 students uh, in each class. I just look at, you know, I just go in here. When I, when I look at my sections, you know, I've got five classes here. I just go through each one. And anywhere I see this highlighted conversation, I know that I have to go in there 
and check the message and respond to them. So this is, again, this is a great way to, uh, to have a conversation and this is a free feature. This isn't something that you have to have pro for. So, um, you know, again, great way to, to have that dialogue with the students. And you don't, you don't have to be in class to do this. You know, I tell my students, you can, if you're getting stuck on something, send me a message. I know we don't have a lot of time outside of class, but it takes just, you know, a couple minutes to go through this outside of class or, you know, I have a younger child, he goes to bed. Um, I just quickly go through Code HS, see if anyone's had questions and, you know, I'm able to get back to them. Um, I think that, I think just that, um, you know, taking that time to respond to their questions, it also, um, it, it builds rapport with the students and it makes them, um, feel a little better that they feel heard. They they feel like they're not just struggling through their exercises and coming into class the next day totally lost with what they were working on. They're getting responses and they're able to to modify it and and actually get a better understanding of what they were doing um, before they come in. Uh, you know, in addition to just the the individual conversations, you can send class announcement class announcements. Um, this is another thing that, that I use. Um, you know, I go back to that example I was saying about um, having, you know, getting multiple messages related to the same topic. Um, if, if I see that that's happening, I'll make an announcement. You know, if there's, if there's something that the students aren't understanding, I'll, I'll make an announcement where uh, I just remind them of something or, you know, I give them a little hint. And just, you know, again, it's, it's like a little tip. It's, it's kind of like in class where, you know, you get everyone's attention and just remind them of something. You're able to do this uh, outside of class or give them uh, a little tip as, as they're working on their homework outside of class. So that's another great way to, to communicate with the students, um, again, without, without uh, needing to be there in class. So, Progress. This is a another progress monitoring. Um, this this is a great tool to to actually understand how and when the students are working on their assignments. So you've got. So let me go. Uh, let me go back to this workshop uh, or this this section that we had. Um, this is so. Up here, so when you're looking at your, your class overview, there's a tab here that says progress. And you've got multiple ways to look at the progress of, of what your students are working on. And each one shows you um, slightly different information. And I'm gonna go through some of those right now. So you can see, um, you can see one, so this is assignment progress. So you can see it, so it pulls up um, the lessons and, and then each of the activities that have been designed. So this, this is actually the whole module and you can see each lesson in here are that whole, and each activity. And you see um, for each activity, you have a, a, a color coded uh, bubble by, by each student. And you have a key up here that you can see, but basically what this means is, so if, if you've got a gray bubble, that means that the student has not um, even opened. They haven't even clicked on that assignment. If you have a yellow one, that means that the student has opened it, but they, they haven't completed it. Now, it, you know, they, they may have worked on it. They may have just opened it and moved on, uh, but there's, there's other ways to get more information. Um, yellow or sorry, green means that, that they've submitted it and that they've, the code checker has marked it as right. Um, blue means that you've, um, checked it off as right. Pink. I like this. Pink means that you have gone in and you've, you've said that it needs more work. Um, it may, you may have given them a, a comment, which tell, tells them what to work on. Um, or you, you've just marked that it needs more work, that they have to go back in and, and change or modify something. 
So again, this, this gives you a great kind of overview of the class. Uh, again, what, what I look at with something like this is that if, you know, again, you don't have time to check through every single assignment, but if you see an activity where the whole, you know, the whole row is yellow, that may tell you that a, a majority of your students are struggling on that one. So on that, I try to look, I look at it and see what they're struggling with. If you look at ones that are all green or all blue, then that, you know, that tells you that they're understanding that or they're all getting that. But it's the ones that are yellow that I try to focus on more. Um, you know, if, if they're all gray, um, that I, I try to look at that a little more too, because that, that tells me that they're just skipping over that. That's, that's one I don't see often, but if I, I try to look at that a little more. Um, you can see right here, this is a pro feature. So um, having this, having the progress tracking, and this, this is something I miss, but again, you're, you know, I, I can get by just fine. Um, now you can also see the, the quiz scores for, for each problem or for each lesson. You know, again, each lesson has a quiz and this allows, this allows you to go through and see what each student is actually scoring on the quiz. Uh, you see the number of questions, you see um, the overall score, and you also, you see the, the mean score also, kind of what the average is. Um, so this, this gives you some good feedback as far as the, the quiz, which I look at as a check for understanding. This gives you a good idea on if there's, if there's a particular topic that they're struggling a bit with. Now, again, this is, this is a pro feature. So this really, the, the difference, you know, when I think about the pro section, versus the free section, all the content to teach the class, everything you need to be prepared for the class and teach the class is free. Um, lesson plans, content, curriculum, um, everything to teach it, everything to communicate with the students, that's all free. It's, it, when it comes to some of the more, um, the, the grading tools, and uh, again, some of this um, in-depth tracking that's uh, where you see a difference with Pro. But, but not all. Um, I'm going to get to one in just a minute, the history tools. Um, that actually used to be Pro. Uh, it's been changed to free re uh, just recently, and I love that. It, you, you get a lot of information from that. Um, I believe, let me see, I think it's on, it's on one of these slides. Um, you can see, again, this has the quiz. I forget. I forget where it is on here. I'm, I don't know if I'm missing it. Um, there's, there's one of, if I go back here, there's one uh, tool, uh, where is it? Oh, this time tracking. Um, this is a great resource. Um, you, you can see right here, there, we have, because we don't have a, a full list and we haven't had assignments, we don't have much in here, but, this time tracking, if you're, if you're trying to look at um, maybe did the students uh, work on it, you know, and unfortunately, when it comes to, um, you know, sharing code or, or, or students cheating on, on tests or exercises, that is something that, that you have to deal with. Um, this allows you to look at every exercise or every um, activity in your lessons. And you can see how long they spent working on each activity. And, and you can tell, you know, and on the exercises where the students have to develop and test and repeat that process, you know, the iterative incremental coding process. If you see that some students are finishing that in five, 10 seconds, you can tell that that student is just cutting and pasting their code and not actually doing it. So this is, this is a great tool to, to just help make sure that the students are actually doing their work. And if you see that they're not, that, that's a conversation that you want to have with them. And again, you want to, you know, you don't just want to punish them and, and you know, you, you want them to grow from this and, and that, hey, you, you do have this ability to manage and see what they're doing. It, it helps minimize the chance of something like this happening again 
and and you can get those students that may be struggling to to really turn it around and ask for help or um, put in more of an effort because they know that you know they're likely to get caught again if they do that. Um, so you can see just when it comes to the the progress tracking, there's really a wealth of information that you can use or see. Um, you know, I mentioned the history. Um, there's there's a few different tools um, that are are related to this. Um, one of this is uh, attendance, and I'll tell you, this was really helpful um, during the remote learning. You know, during the time when students were supposed to be um, logging on and um, doing stuff remotely, when they, you know, you may not have been able to track them through Zoom or through your you know, Google Meet, whatever you're using for your, your meetups, um, you were able to log in and actually see that they were logging on and, and working on Code HS. You were seeing how much they were working on it. Again, this is a pro feature, but it, it does show that you can see um, how long they're spending working on this. Um, you know, this, this, this same thing, this is getting into the, the time tracking. You see how much they're spending. I think that was, I, I forgot, this was the time tracking that I was talking about up here. Um, this, is, this is another tool. This, this, the student history, this is what I was talking about. Um, I wanna go back and show you an example from a, a problem that, that was really written that, that I wrote um, as a test section. So if you go up into more and look at the history, um, Code HS, so, uh, a timestamp is created every time the students save or run their code, that version is saved to the history. Um, they also, CodeHS also auto saves this. If, if the students just have this open and they're not running it or saving it, CodeHS automatically saves that version. There's some real value to this. If, if the students accidentally delete their code and save it, um, they never lose their code because they can always just go back and and you know click on this and they have their code here. But this is also a great tool uh, as a teacher. I can go back in and see how you know I can see their whole uh, process and I can see what they've been doing and and walking through their mindset as they're programming. You know I can see what they're doing at first. I can see that. You know, they created a function, they're, they're writing out all of these commands, and then they're, they're writing in the rest of their code, calling this function, then creating another function. And I can see what their process is. I can see if they're implementing the tools that we've learned. I can see if they're not. I can see if they're just writing out all, all the commands and then going back and putting those into functions, which is not, not what they should be doing. You know, they should be doing, you know, they should be breaking the program down into smaller problems, solving each of those, and then implementing those. So you, you get a chance to, to see how they're solving them. If they're, if they're not applying top-down design, which we learn about, you can have a conversation with them and um, see why they're not doing it and see if you have to go back and review that with them. Um, again, it's, it's also a helpful tool when it comes to seeing if a student just copy and pasted their work. You know, you can see it right as it goes in. Um, you know, so I see a, I see a benefit with, with three different ways. The students never lose their code. Um, the teacher, you can see their progress. So you know um, their mindset. And again, you can also make sure that they're, they're developing their own code and not just getting it from somewhere. Um, again, this is, this is a free tool. Um, in, in the past, it was pro but now it's a free tool, um, which I really think is awesome. Um, again, some of the, we only have a, a little bit more. I know, I know it's, we're coming up on an hour, so I wanna be respectful of your time, but I've also, I've got plenty of time to ask questions too. So um, I'm mean, just gonna go through the last few slides here. Um, with, so with help mode. So this is, this is a way where, you've got when you when you go into your class you actually see uh, a whole kind of queue 
or a list of the questions that have been asked. And you can, you can respond to all of them. Um, it's just another way to see the questions and, and start having the conversations um, so that you know, if you miss a question uh, with a conversation, you've also got a way where you can just go through, it's, it's called review uh, when you're in your section. Um, again, you've, you have not just do you have a queue of questions, but you've got a queue of assignments that have been submitted that you can go through and, and grade. Um, there's ways that you can, um, you can filter it. So you just look at certain um, exercises. Again, it can sometimes be overwhelming when you have thousands of, of submissions, but you can decide which ones to look at and which ones you want auto grade to, to look at. Um, so this is, um, this is another place where you can go through and you can, this is where you can um, mark them. As you go through each assignment, um, you, can, you can have um, like cookie cutter responses where you might, you know, if, they're, if all of them are correct, you can send that um, feedback. Um, you can, again, you can mark it as finalized. If there's something that, that they, they did wrong, this is where you get that, that pink bubble that shows up. Um, this is a free feature. So if you don't have pro, have access to this as well. Um, fast grade. This, this is a, a really cool feature. Um, this, this is one of those that uh, I do, I use this a lot when I had the, the pro um, set up. Um, this, so what this is, is you can, you can uh, click on an exercise and you have the solution code uh, right here on the right. And then you can, you can click through every student in your section and you see their code here. And again, you can, you can leave a comment, you can mark it as completed or needs work. And instead of having to let manually go through each student in your section, you just mark it and then the next student pops up. There's even keyboard commands that, that you can learn. And it, once you learn that, you can really zip through a class really fast. Um, this, this is a pro feature and um, it's, a, it's a really a great one. If you have the opportunity to get the pro, the pro tools, I think this alone is, is worth it to, to get it. Um, it really cuts down on, on the time. Um, the grade book. You know, we've talked a lot about um, progress check, checking and, and the tracking. Um, this is another way to, um, to help if you just, just wanna look at um, what they've done. Um, each assignment in CodeHS has a default number of points that are set with it, but you can actually change those if you want, you know, if you have a, a specific amount you want for each section, you can just align this with your grade book and, um, and, and really not have to um, you know, transfer, you know, write it down your own grade book. You can just use this and translate this to your grade book. Again, pro feature here, um, just like some of the others, you can see that there's really um, a lot of great tracking and grading tools that are involved. You can see here in the, in the settings, you can select which ones are auto-graded. Uh, this is where you would select the auto-graded versus the ones that you would change manually. You see that each, this is each module and lesson inside of that. Um, you also have the assignment to, to grade um, from the assignments page. So this makes it uh, a little faster without having to go in um, and, and do each one. You can, you can set up the grading so you're kind of looking at it from, from uh, an overview uh, where you do the grading. Uh, this is another pro feature. Um, so a lot of these, you, again, you see these are these are features that are really designed to help um, with time management and efficiency. Um, another thing that's nice, again, this is a pro feature. Um, at the end of each module or most modules, there's a quiz where um, the students take. It's usually a 15 to 25 question quiz that really gives you a um, a nice, uh, it gives you some great feedback on, on how they're doing after going through that module. 
And with the with the free version, um, all you know the quizzes there they always have the you know every every student that takes it the quiz are in the same order, um, and you can't reset the quizzes and reassign them if you wanted the, some two students to take it over again. With the pro feature, you can do all of that. Um, the quizzes are still there in the free feature, but once they take them once, um, that's you know they're they're done. You can't. Um, you, you can't shuffle the quiz questions, uh, but they're still, again, they're still there. Um, you know, with these, with the pro feature, you can shuffle the questions, um, you can reset them so the students take it again. Um, and um, really this, you know, we've, we've now kind of hit on all of the tools. Um, you see a lot of these, uh, a lot of these that we talked about um, really just give you a lot of information on, on what the students go through and um, really kind of give you the mindset as they go through this. Um, a, a couple more resources that uh, give you a chance to, to kind of dig deeper just with CodeHS and um, sharing with other teachers uh, that, that use CodeHS. You can, so first of all, you can become a CodeHS certified educator. This is great because uh, you once you do this, you become part of a network of certified educators, and there's um, there there's meetups, there's um, there's there's ways to share best practices and um, get involved and and just have have PD that's a, that's solely for certified educators. There's a Facebook group where there's some great conversations that go on. Um, there's free workshops, or you can either lead them or attend them, where you get great information. And CodeHS is also on social media. So I highly recommend checking these out and seeing if it's a, a possibility for you. And that's really it. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate um, you taking time out of your day to attend. Um, if, you, if you have time, it's, it's, this gives us a lot of great feedback. Um, uh, Lori and Leah do a great job of, of organizing these and really um, helping run these programs. And so this, this survey gives us uh, and them great feedback just for helping plan these in the future and um, making them really valuable to you. So we're not wasting your time. You're, you're getting things that uh, really uh, you can apply and are helpful to you. So um, thank you again um, for joining and uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll see you at another one. And Sean, I just have to say that, it, first of all, thank you. Um, of course. It's very nice. Course. But I have to say we couldn't do it without you and our other amazing teacher trainers. So um, I always say that I think uh, I think those of us who work at Code HS always see ourselves as teachers first because we were all teachers. But you know, it's it, we we're not as close to the classroom anymore. Every every little bit that we work at Code HS, we get further from that actual teaching experience in the classroom, and so we rely on our teacher trainers to uh, really, you know, talk that language and, and connect with our, with our teachers. And honestly, it kind of puts us right back there. So <laughs> we love working with teachers. Um, Sean, that was really great. Does anybody have any questions? Sean, I am gonna mention also, there was one question and Michelle did have to go but I thought yeah. maybe if we could just touch on it super quick. Um, sure. Michelle was asking in chat, what about resources for reteaching a concept? Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, for, so I, I've been just, kind of mulling that. At... Sure. I've been mulling that over a little bit if you want to think about it. And I could certainly chime in a little bit too. Um, you know, one well, of my... Oh, go ahead, Sean. Oh, no, 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 go for it. Go for it. I'm just, I'm looking for the question. Uh, in oh, the chat. sure. Go ahead. It's, yeah. It's back a little ways. So Michelle okay. asked it maybe 15 minutes ago or so. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead. I would say, well, Sean's looking back at that and giving that a little thought, um, you know, you can certainly, I think Code HS is, is great for, for that reteaching uh, component as well with the feedback pieces and, uh, you know, communication and just, there's so many ways to build in um, kind of that formative assessment piece as well, where you can really check in with your students as you go through the material. 
and see, you know, where, where is that learning happening or where are we missing that learning? So, you know, it's easy to stop and kind of do those in the moment kind of teaching situations, but, you know, there's also a ton of resources, whether you are on free or pro, and you can certainly customize your course on either plan. Um, you can bring in additional content from the course, uh, from the course catalog. You can bring in supplemental material. If you feel like, wow, I need to scaffold this a little bit differently or give somebody else something a little different. You can also add some customizations yourself. And that is whether you are free or pro. You can, if you've got uh, maybe some resources that you used in a different class or something that you just, you know, as teachers, we all have our own toolbox of resources. So maybe there's something that you've used that is, um, that works especially well with a different learning style or with somebody who might need something approached from a different angle, you can yes. typically build that into the course. And so that's what I was thinking of. And Sean, I don't know if there's something else you want to add to that. Yeah, no, you know, I think it, um, depending on, on what it is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think it's different if, if it's a, if it's a specific topic in programming, like if it's, if it's lists or if it's, if it's loops, you know, I, I, I use the practice problems a lot that, that you guys have. I usually don't, um, that's not something that I require, um, but I, I will go into those um, if I find that either it's an individual student or if it's a, if it's a topic that, that needs a little more focus. Um, I also do, like you said, customizing the courses. Um, some of there, there's some of the topics like like data structures is is one that I feel like it's it's a really important topic, but I feel like we kind of go through it quickly, and so that's one I bring that over from the Python course, um, and it gives us a whole new section. Um, strings that's not in the CSP. I bring that over from the Python course because I think those are just really valuable tools to have. Um, another thing that I do is um, when I find that, that people are struggling with something, I feel that like actually looking at code, not just looking at how to solve something, but looking at code that's wrong and figuring out how do we fix this? So, so I'll, you know, I'll put up a code, I'll put up programs that are, that are wrong, that have some fixed like debugging. Right. And I'll have the students work like, everyone takes a look at it, but then they talk with their partners and they have to figure out what's wrong. And it just, it gives them a different approach because they're not, they're not just focused on how do I solve this problem, but okay, here's a code that is kind of right. How do we, how do we fix it? You know, so it's, it's just different ways, I think, of looking at the problems. And again, depending on what topic it is, um, there's also, you know, there are other sites that, again, they're, it's not necessary. It's not really that they don't provide the content, but they're sites that just give extra practice problems. Cause I think those, that's a great way to just reinforce, you know, more practice that you get. It's sites just, just like the practice problems you guys provide. Um, it's just other resources like that to give more um, practice with it. For sure. So, yeah, I think that would, that would kind of I'm be my answer to that. Really glad you brought up practice problems. I don't know why that. Yeah left my head <laughs> but, <laughs> no those are awesome I mean yeah. they're 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 sorted by topic you know mm -hmm. so depending on what the you know where the reteaching needs to they're sorted by topic and then by level too because mm -hmm. there's there's level one level two and they, they get progressively harder and along those same lines there's a problem bank as well that's yeah you know educator created basically so teachers can submit those exercises and problems and it's another really great place to go and maybe you just right. need something different for the day and for you sure grab something out of there there's some really cool projects yeah. in those so there are yeah all right do we have any questions at all yeah any other ones did you have one yeah Oh. Okay. I don't know. I see you, Mary Bell. Are you, do you have a question or? Yeah. I, oh, no, no question. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I, was, yeah. I didn't want to cut you off just in case. So, <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah. Thank you for coming. This is great. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank we know you. 
we know that your days are packed <laughs> and uh, we heard from a lot of teachers and what we know is that our hearts are with you because this has been quite a year after the year that we all came off of. So, um, you know, hopefully, um, hopefully everything's been going well for you. That's our biggest hope. And, uh, you know, we just appreciate that you take the time to hang out with us for an hour and, and we love this. So thank you for being here. Um, I will definitely send out the recording and the slides tomorrow. Uh, as soon as I get that video processed and ready to go, it's coming out to all of you. Um, definitely take a look at that page, codehs.com slash free PD. I'll go ahead and toss that into chat. I'll send that on the email too. Oop, I can't type. Okay, there. I think that's will totally get you to the page. <laughs> so codehs.com slash free PD. We have additional workshops that are posted right now. Um, we actually do have another teacher trainer workshop coming up tomorrow uh, from Joe Thompson, who's going to be talking about starting a certification culture at your school. I'm pretty excited about that because I was also a CTE teacher. Um, so very excited to hear that. And then in a couple of weeks on uh, the 17th, uh, we have another teacher trainer who will be talking to us about um, doing some customization in Code HS. And I'm pretty excited for Portia Morell's uh, session as well. And so just keep in mind that customization feature is for free and pro teachers. Anybody can do it. So, all right, Sean, this was awesome. We'll go ahead and oh, thank wrap you. this up for tonight. And again, thank you. Thank you for coming. This yeah, great. thank you. Have a great evening and have a great rest of the week. Thanks. All right. One second.